In this video, we will cover A to Z guide on NLP in just five minutes. So let's get started with A attention mechanism. Now, attention mechanism is a way to selectively focus on important parts of a sequence while processing it. Imagine a teacher reading a long short story to a class and highlighting the most important parts for better comprehension. Then comes B for BERT or the bidirectional encoder representations from transformers, which is a popular pre-trained NLP model that can understand text in multiple languages. So imagine a language interpreter who can understand multiple languages and translate between them. Then comes C, that is a character level NLP. So you're analyzing text at character level instead of word or sentences. For this, think of a person who can identify individual letters in a word and sounds they make to read a book. Then comes dependency parsing. Analyzing the grammatical relations between words in a sentence. So imagine a puzzle game where you rearrange words to form a grammatically correct sentence. Then comes E is for embedding, representing words as vectors in multidimensional space, capturing their semantic meaning. So think of words arranged on a map according to their meanings. Then come F for fine tuning. That is adjusting a pre-trained model's parameter to better suit a specific task. So imagine a trained chef adapting their recipes for different audiences. Then comes G for GPT, generative pre-trained transformer, which is a series of powerful language models like GPT-3, which can generate coherent text. Think of a talented writer who can write a whole story from a single seed idea. Then comes H. That is for hidden Markov model, which is a statistical model used in NLP for tasks like speech recognition, test chunking, and part of speech tagging. For this, imagine a game of word association where each word is a hidden state and the model predicts the next word based on the previous word state. Example, using a hidden Markov model for part of speech tagging, the hidden states are the part of the speech, be it noun or verb. And the observable outputs are the words themselves where the model predicts the most likely sequence of part of speech for a given sentence. Then comes I. I is for information retrieval, which is a process of searching for and retrieving relevant information from a collection of documents. For this, think of a search engine that returns results for a given query. Example, a user types best pizza in the New York and the search engine retrieves relevant web pages, articles and reviews about this top pizza places in New York City. Then comes J. That is for the jacket similarity, which is a measure of similarity between two sets. So basically, it compares the size of intersection and the size of union of the set. And this metric is commonly used in NLP for text similarity, comparing the overlap between two sets of words. For example, two articles uh, about the same topic have high jacket similarity as they share many common words. So to calculate this jacket similarity, you would compare the intersection and union of words in each articles like intersection of the words by union of words. Then comes K, that is a knowledge graph, which is a visual representation of entities and their relationships. For this, think of a spider diagram where nodes represent entities and lines represent their connection. Then comes L for the lexical, which is a collection of words and their meanings. Imagine a dictionary containing words and their definition. Then comes machine translation, converting text from one language to another using NLP techniques. For this, think of a translator who can translate text from one language to another. Then comes N for named entity, which is a specific type of entity such as person, organization or location identified in text. For this, imagine a list of famous people, companies and countries. Then comes O for optical character recognition which converts scanned text into editable text. For this, imagine a tool that can turn a scanned book into a digital format. Then comes P for the pause tagging, identifying parts of the speech, be it noun, verb, for each word in a sentence. For this, imagine highlighting nouns, verbs, and adjectives in a sentence with different colors. Then Q for quorum voting, where which combines predictions from multiple models to make a final prediction. For this, imagine a group of friends discussing and deciding on a restaurant choice based on the individual preferences. Then comes R for the regular expression, which is a way to search and manipulate text using patterns. For this, think of a search bar with advanced filters to find specific information. Then S for sentiment analysis, which is determining the sentiment, be it positive, negative or neutral in test. 
for example imagine a tool that can analyze customer reviews and summarize their overall satisfaction then t for tokenization or breaking text into smaller units such as words or characters for this imagine cutting a book into individual pages for easier handling then comes u for unsupervised learning which is learning patterns in data without labeled example for this uh, imagine a puzzle where you need to group similar pieces without any instructions then comes v for vocabulary which is a collection of words used in a specific context for this think of the words used in a particular book or language then w for word embeddings which represent words as a vectors in a multi dimensional space capturing their semantic meaning for this think of words arranged on a map according to their meanings then x for entropy which is a measure of difference between two probability distributions often used as loss function in machine learning so in nlp entropy is used in training models like language models and neural machine translation then y is for yaroskwi method which is a technique for unsupervised word sense disambiguation which uses the distributional similarity of words in context to infer the sense of words for this imagine disambiguating the meaning of bank by analyzing its usage in sentence the bank of the river versus the bank deposited money then comes z for the zero shot learning which is a technique where the model can perform new tasks without being explicitly trained on them for this imagine a language model that can translate from languages it has never seen before based on its general understanding of the language patterns thank you